So, we've made it to week 13, day 3, the final day of the season, the 39th day of the season, and I believe the first day without any single UK racing. We're all over the place today, but we're not in, in the UK anywhere. We're in Australia, we're in Japan, we're in South Africa, we're in America. We're here, there and everywhere. We're starting off at Flemington, then we're going to Nakayama again, then we're going to go to Kyoto, then Randwick, Scottsville, Kenilworth, Turfentine, Graveville, and finally Florida. So it's International Jet Setting Day to end the season. And before we end the season, let's give a big pat on the back to Mr. John Morgan, who is the champion trainer for the flat, or should we call him Mr. John on retiring from the flat, Morgan? So if that's what retiring from the flat does for you, I think we better all retire, haven't we? And then we might come back as the champion trainer. So let's take a look then at what we've got on offer Today, we're starting off in Australia, the same place as we were yesterday for the end of the racing with the um, Melbourne Cup, of course, yesterday afternoon. Wasn't that, a, wasn't that an exciting race? And it um, would have been even more exciting for me if Monad had managed to win rather than just get beaten on the line by Paul Rhodes' horse. So, well done, Paul. Anyway, the first of the races at Flemington today is the Victoria Derby. And I'm sure Doug will still be behind the mic for that one and it looks like it could be a pretty interesting race there's quite a few in there with some really good form right the way down to the bottom they've got good form. there's only one horse in there that looks like he's really tilting at a wind and that's alex cherry's belgian new year but you've got to be in it to win it so why not run it if you can it's not going to get in anybody's way is it and um star of david for paul rhodes will probably be the favorite but treaty of melbourne looks pretty good for him as well so he'll be hoping for a one two in that race but maybe one or two people trying to stop him and one of those will no doubt be django the hometown trainer will be trying to uh, keep the prize where him and his fellow australian trainers will think it belongs after that we've got the crown oaks which is for the Phillies, of course, smaller field for this one, and Paul Rhodes again has got the uh, the most likely looking winner in that one with Treaty of Versailles, but we've seen plenty of upsets this season, haven't we? So anything could win that one, really. After that, then, we'll be um, just nipping over to Nakayama for one race, the title of which is frighteningly similar to the title of the race we had from Nakayama yesterday. In fact, I would go as far as to say it's exactly the same. Fortunately, it's different horses, and there's a lot of them as well. A lot of them in this race. It's a one-mile 0 to 110 and there's almost 110 runners so trying to pick a winner of that will be just about impossible because if you're drawn wide you're probably going to give lots of ground away we saw the track yesterday you wouldn't want to be wide on the track for too far there you're also going to need to be drawn on drawn on the inside you're going to need to be pretty near the front as well if you're at the back you're probably never going to get through all the other horses so trying to pick a winner from that is pretty much impossible and cyan Emilio for darren thompson is going for a three timer so that'll be interesting for that one if it gets a decent sort of draw but that could be the last of the crazy races of the season couldn't it with far too many horses in it then we'll be um off to Kyoto for the Fantasy Stakes, and Ghost Zapper is represented in that one by Ghost Zapper. So that's John Morgan, of course. To people who don't know, I'm sure everybody knows by now that Ghost Zapper is John Morgan, and Ghost Zapper's won three of his last four, and he'll be trying to make it four out of his last five. He's got a couple of pounds in hand, according to official ratings, over Molliet Steps and Molliet Surfer. Smash the zoom for. Joshua Sutherland also looks pretty good and Hellcat for Graham Clutterbuck has won two of his last three if you're looking for an outsider to spring a bit of a surprise. Then we go to Australia again, back to Randwick for the Everest and Sabretooth is towards the top of the race into that one. Wonderful Roses for Steve Rand, Airwolf for Paul Rhodes, Down Under for Django, all got good chances in that small field but should still be a pretty exciting sort of race. Then we'll be over to Scottsville which is in South Africa. Tim will probably make an appearance for these. And uh, he didn't quite make it to Pontefract yesterday. Uh, Whitewater is the top rated one there. Nine pounds superior to baseline boom to Joshua Sutherland. Mr. Sanford over Robertson looks an interesting one though in that Sasogo Sun Sprint race. The second of the two races from Scottsville is a one mile five foot on 0 70. Mr. Loud for Darren Howes would be uh, what a few people's fancy for that. I think Belgian Street for Alex Cherry looks pretty good as well and it's quite an interesting looking field quite a few of those have been racing against each other week in week out so pays your money takes your choice then we'll be off to Kenilworth which is not the Kenilworth which is about five mile away from where I live but a Kenilworth which is in South Africa and this is the Law Marin's Queen Plate Turf bit of a mouthful and faux pas for Steve Rand is the top rated one in that rated six pounds superior but these have been racing against each other all season as well Zelade Velez and Overflow will both fancy their chances of turning the tables on faux pas and that should be 
uh, race, a race well worth watching. The Summer of Champions Plate is the second of the two at Kenilworth. Uh, 0-70 to this time, and a big surprise there that Vinnie Gerrard's got one in a 0-70, so obviously one that's been a bit disappointing for him. That's the top rated at 69. Flash flood for David Rawson has been consistent. Jar ambitious certainly deserves a win for James Will. has been getting close a few times. And Paddy's women for Stu Gray is either seventh or thereabouts usually as well. So that could go to anybody as well, that one. Then we're off to Turf on time. And the Sunswai Comic... <laughs> then we're off to Turf and time for the Sunswai Summer Cup. I think your teeth in the right way around to say that. And Grand Gesture is the top-rated one there for Steve Ran. Extra favourite for Django. Looks like it could be interesting as well. But again, that's another one that is a wide-open race. Margaret Court is probably due a win for Paul Rhodes as well. He could have another good day towards the end of the season then. So Turf and Tyne Handicap is the next race from Turf and Tyne, surprisingly enough. 35, race 35 this one is then. And Belly Div Beer. <laughs> so the second race from Turf and Tyne is the... Turf and Tyne Handicap, it's a 0-90 Bele Biv Devo for Stu Gray. Why would a commentator call a horse Bele Biv Devo? It's such a mouthful to get out. Oh, I really don't know. Enough of some of these commentators. I can't mind about everything, can I? I'm turning into Stu. <laughs> anyway, race 35 is the Turf and Tyne Handicap, 0-90 Bele Biv Devo for Stu Gray. Top rated one there. Super awesome for Hannah Jones, looks pretty good. Curtain Call is also no back number, and I would suggest it's probably between those three then we'll be going to greyville they're certainly getting about a bit today aren't we proud morrison for daniel thompson is the top rated one in the alan gold cup which is a capped group one it's capped at 100 so it'll be an opportunity for somebody to get a good group one winner here a lot of these horses have been racing against each other in the handicaps throughout the season two martha derrick hinton is bred to be exactly what he is finders keepers for serious chill this is no windmill tilt from serious chill this one's well, well capable of winning funky music is also one that could go well smoke on the water's probably going to find a little bit too far and Stu gray thinks afraid is just about a dead cert and he's put it in this one instead of the melbourne cup and after yesterday's melbourne cup he probably wishes he'd put it in the melbourne cup now because the horse that came second in that was given a good beating by this one last week. But who's to say that Afraid isn't going to take this by six lengths? That would have to be a bit of a pointer towards that one. And so that's where my money would be going if I was going to be having a little bet on that race. That'll leave us with just two races left. The second of the two from Greyville. That's a 0-75 furlong. So the last real chance for the lower trainers to get themselves a win and most of the usual suspects from the lower rated races are in there represented or doubly represented persona and secret soul with the top two they're only rated 61 though so i don't know where the horses rated 62 to 70 have gone um and this one could be wide open should be a cavalry charge down towards the finishing line and i really wouldn't have a clue what's going to win that it's one of those ones that you could run it 10 times and get 10 different winners the season will conclude with the pegasus world cup invitational race at florida i think it's in Gulfstream park isn't it nine furlongs is the trip and it's quite a big field for this really considering and Suchet for steve ran is just about a top rated favorite you for django who's been in his first full season and managed to scatter a few reputations around and take a few of the big group one races young guy zelladay for darren thompson and long time ago for paul rhodes also will be in there with a chance those four are rated far superior to the rest of them and it's difficult to see anything other than one of those four taking the last race of the season so that's it then i think you've probably got a little bit of everybody on the commentaries today we got the commentaries totally wrong yesterday because tim didn't do point of i ended up doing point of but i'm pretty sure tim will manage to drag himself to the south africa races and we should get dug at flemington for the rest of the australian ones and i'm pretty sure mike will be picking up a few hopefully doing the florida one with a bit of luck you won't have to put up with any more flat from me today so that's the season then hope you all had a good time and i'll maybe see you next time